Hi there, I'm Lee Blickley of HuffPost and welcome to Build Series. John Krasinski's A Quiet Place took moviegoers by surprise in 2018 with a suspenseful story about a family who must live in silence to avoid mysterious creatures that hunt by sound. It was scary, thrilling, and yes, very quiet. So now the silence continues with A Quiet Place Part 2, which not only shows part of the origin story of these creatures, but what happens to the Abbott family after the events of the first movie. And today we are joined by Millicent Simmons and Jaiman Tansu. Thank you so much for being here, both of you. Thank you so much. Uh, now, I know it's a scary thing when a sequel happens. So, <laughs> Millicent, how did it feel uh, when John and Emily told you that uh, part two was happening? Were you nervous, excited, a mixture of both? Well, when John, uh, he called me over FaceTime, and my mom and I were sitting there, and we were like, okay. He said, okay, Millie, just hear me out. I have this story I want to pitch. And I was surprised because really after A Quiet Place, I thought what could follow that? It was so perfect. I mean, it was so perfect in its own right. Why would you even want to try to follow it up? But after I heard him pitch the story, I just had to say, sign me up. This is a great story. Yeah, and how did it feel that first movie uh, did so well and it was such a surprise hit? Uh, was it so exciting for you as an actress to be a part of a film like that? Absolutely. I didn't expect it. While we were filming, you know, I'm just a kid. I didn't really understand, but I should have known it would be such a success because you have Emily and John who are, you know, well-known stars in it. But, uh, and, you know, there's no other story like it. Uh, but we didn't think that while filming. Yeah. And how about you, uh, Jaiman? Did you watch A Quiet Place? What were your thoughts when you saw the first one? And was it an exciting opportunity to join part two? No, it definitely was an exciting opportunity to join the part two, given the success of the first one. Uh, tremendous, you know, creative uh, inspiration, I guess, uh, John had with his wife. And, and it, always, it almost seems like a little family movie, right? And so we were the extension of that family that they've created, you know, that little family movie that they created uh, back then, and uh, such a great success. And she was so electri electrifying in it as well. So uh, she's she's the woman of the film, yeah. She really is. Yeah, she is. Oh, thank you, Jaiman. You too. You are amazing to work oh. with in a film. <laughs> thank you. And how was it to get that phone call from John uh, requesting uh, you to course. be a part of the movie? But you know, I mean, the phone call came and I was a bit surprised. I was like, wow, that was a great successful film. And uh, so evidently I didn't even ask uh, to see a script. I just uh, said yes to John based on his, uh, you know, his pitch over the phone to me. And, uh, and so I joined the team sort of like the tail end of filming. They were almost like they shot three quarter of the film already by the time I came on board. And uh, yeah, it was a beautiful uh, film to come to, and uh, you know, obviously, the, uh, the, 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 the expectations uh, and anticipation is qu quite high, mm -hmm. uh, given the first, you know, the success of the first one, and uh, and given the fact that uh, it was the same uh, team that was coming together, and this felt more like a continuation of the original story, and you know and didn't feel much of a sequel at all. So therefore, it, uh, I think that's why it probably helps the story, you know. Yeah. Uh, John has said that the first movie was a love letter to his kids, mm -hmm. and that this one is more so uh, a dream for them right. about how they can be brave and courageous yeah. and kind of lead. Yeah, I could see that. I can see that. Yeah, and how did that feel for you, Millicent? Because you really are the star of this movie. Uh, it's a really big honor for me. Uh, and, you know, just uh, tagging onto what you just said, when he said it was a love letter for his kids, um, I feel like this one is a love letter from his children to his parent, to their parents. It, it was so much fun to be a part of it, and it was a very emotional journey, too. You don't get this, you don't get this opportunity very often to reunite with a cast, to come back into a story world again on a, a second time, and I really appreciate that moment. Yeah, how did it feel to come back? Uh, to this family that you had created, and to this world that John's created. It's fantastic. It was just fan and such an honor. Again, I don't know what other word to, to, to how I could describe it, but to do it again and 
it, um, it, and again, it's not like any other sequel, Diamond. Mm -hmm. Just like you said, it didn't feel like a sequel. It felt mm -hmm. like it was a continuation mm -hmm. of the story, that there, no time had passed between the first story and the second Truly. story. Yeah. Truly. And it, it, uh, similarly, in ways that she said it, uh, I think in the way you put it, Melissa, it, uh, it uh, almost felt like um, in, this in this setting, in the second one, it felt like the kids were growing, mm -hmm. you know. The, the little boy was becoming the father again, you know, the father who sacrificed himself to save them, to preserve them. He was becoming, and she was becoming that woman she was, you know, growing yeah. to. It's beautiful. I, I, yeah, that was a nice set. Uh, Thank you. I mean, it's so crazy, right, the story? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Well, because they, so. too, have to take care of their mother in a way who has yes. just given birth and, and has that to try little to navigate brother, that yes. new reality. For sure, yeah. How is that for you to play opposite Emily and Noah and kind of create that new family dynamic without Lee, the character of Lee? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it was awesome, as always, to work with Emily and Noah again to come back together. They're both just terrific people. Uh, the most wonderful people I've known, and I and it's, I'm very close with them, and it was fun to work with them, but to come back into that world with them, and to meet Jaiman and Killian as well. It's so fun to explore this new energy uh, uh, that they brought into the family, mm -hmm. and it's a big honor to work with you. Yes, yes. Yeah, is it exciting to join a cast, or is it more nerve-wracking to kind of enter into a world that they've uh, created? No, I think the world they have created, uh, it's uh, in its, um, um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's cinema at its pure state, in a way. You know, this idea of uh, existing in a quiet place, in a place which uh, you couldn't make a noise, and, uh, and so it's a particular genre, but uh, he... Um, I forgot what I was saying, trying to say about that, but I, I think I thought he did a, such a great job with that, and uh, and uh, the the, the uh, essence of humanity you could yeah. feel so much present there, you know, because again, individually we're trying to survive and trying to preserve the legacy of the family, mm -hmm. the family that we've witnessed on the first one. Now it's venturing outside, and obviously had to, you know, faced with the same challenge, but other other challenges uh, along the way, which is the other survivors that you have to, you know, yeah. now have to deal with. Uh, yeah, so in that essence, it's a very humane and very, you know, socially relevant story. Well, that's what gripped audiences to begin with right. was, you know, John wrote such a beautiful love story to children and families mm -hmm. mixed within this horror genre. Mm -hmm. uh, how does it feel to kind of be a part of a movie like that that's trying to say a little bit more but still has that aspect of suspense and, and thriller and... Oh, it's an honor, it's an honor truly, uh, and certainly to, uh, for John to have, you know, uh, thought about me, of me, to be a part of it, to portray that character. Uh, I'm quite thankful of it, uh, and I thought, you know, this is a great... Uh, his little baby, it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's pretty a big baby now. Yeah, and, it uh, is. You know, and yeah, Millie, it was a big baby for you. This was a big task to take on because you are at the forefront of the story and it very much follows you and how you continue your father's legacy in protecting your family and protecting mm -hmm. the world um, in a way. Uh, how was that for you, that weight on your shoulders? It was a very emotional journey, mm -hmm. especially for Regan. I mean, she's had gone through the loss of her dad and the... And the quiet place mm -hmm. and now she has to become an adult almost overnight in the situation she steps into becoming the leader and she's dealing with regrets and burdens of her own there's so much that she has to contend with and it was very emotional for me as well mm -hmm. I mean she's still a child Regan mm -hmm. and she has to be brave she has to be brave for the family and this journey affects her her family the family dynamics 
and uh, she's always carrying the voice of her father in her. Whatever my father thinks is right is what I have to do. Very and true. so she's trying to fulfill his legacy too, yes. which is a very emotional journey. Yeah. yeah. And how was it to work with, uh, I know Killian Murphy has joined the cast and you have some amazing scenes with him. How was it to bring him on board? Uh, and you both get to work with him too. Mm -hmm. It was um, really amazing to work with Gillian. When I first met him, I didn't expect him to look the way he did. <laughs> he, the you eyes, know, right? Yeah, well, <laughs> I mean, but he showed up, he showed up with sort of wearing these dirty clothes. He had the beard and all scraggly looking. I didn't expect that. It was really fun. That's uh, funny. He, That's his I, name uh, on set. She, uh, no, I just want to say, uh, Gillian's name on set. Yes, Beer. that's his name. Uh, that's his name. Sign. That's one thing I learned. It's really funny to give him that Millie. sign name. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we um, we had a lot of scenes, and I noticed that we approach acting in the same way. I think that we found a way to work together very quickly and felt and felt very comfortable. He's such a down to earth person, and he loves to read. And so we would always, you know, share and talk about what we're reading at the yeah. moment. And how was it for him? I know that, uh, you know, it must have been cool. I heard the story of how he uh, got on board and then he had seen A Quiet Place and he was going to send an email to John, yeah. but he didn't. And then it happened that, that John was really, thought of it him was for good, the role. quite a great story. Yeah. yeah. Was it cool for uh, you to get to work with Killian and kind oh, of hear sure. his story of how he got on board? For sure. And certainly I thought it was uh, even uh, more. Uh, the story is Richard, the fact that he never sent the message yeah. and uh, eventually got a call to be in it the second time around, which I think uplifts uh, his kids, you know, because mm -hmm. he wanted to see the kid, the, the film with his kids, and his, his kids were moved uh, by that, that story. So yeah. I thought that was great. Did you feel that Killian kind of embodied that role that you had read when John sent you the script, Millie? Like, did you feel like when he showed up on set with the beard and the look, um, it was the character you envisioned for Emmett? I um, I think so, really. He really fit Emmett's character. He was as perfect. I mean, it looks like he, you know, that I felt like the role was made for him, and maybe it was. Yeah. I know, and I can't really say many spoilers, so I'm trying to dance around it. Yeah, no, uh, you can't really tell, say too much about the story. Especially your character, You can't, character, say, you right? can't say Very much secret. about it. You can't say the, my character's name. You can't say, I mean, all I can say is I'm one of the survivors, you know, mm -hmm. that is still you know, trying to cope with uh, the new environment. Is that fun for you, uh, to keep the spoilers and have an audience be surprised by Well, this character? time around is actually uh, pleasant, yeah. you know. It's, it's difficult hard. to talk around All right, cause the, Marvel uh, Universe too the, the film whole. and what the story is about. It's, it's quite difficult, but uh, at the same time, it's fun. Yeah. yeah. How about for you, Millie? Is it hard to keep things Quiet and, and spoilers. Yes, it is. Spoiler Actually, free. I can't wait. To <laughs> I, to, I can't wait to talk about all the things I can't talk about now. Um, but it really, it was. It's a lot of fun to see what I can say at this point and how to get around the story without, you know. And especially when questions are asked, you know, I and you want to answer it, but yeah. you have to go around it. Yeah, tiptoe. Uh, what I can say though is we see a whole lot more of the creatures in this movie, uh, which is really exciting and thrilling. Uh, how is it for you to act against, uh, clearly there were no creatures on set, so how did you kind of envision, um, you know, being chased, being, confronting these, these creatures? Uh, yes, it, it, actually the location, the shooting location would affect me a lot. If it was dark, if it was creepy, uh, that helped me find the fear. Mm -hmm. And I mean, because in reality, what you're looking at is a wall with a piece of tape on it. That's mm -hmm. the monster or some guy in a green suit, right. uh, you know, and it's kind of hard to feel scared of that. Uh, but when I was working with the cast, I mean, their energy would affect me too. It was better. I mean, if their their fear would come into me, and I would feel my own fear, so that helped mm -hmm. me. That helped me too when working with the cast. And did it help you, kind of, after doing the first movie? You knew the look and feel of these creatures, so you can kind of imagine yeah, it all kinda, more. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Well, you, yeah, I think we, we never really have a creature. There's a look of cre you know, yeah. the look of the creatures is not really phase you here because yeah. we never really have anything to look at, right? <laughs> Just a guy in a green suit. Yeah. But was it cool to watch it in the cinema and oh, yeah, experience? For sure. for sure, because most of those, that story, you really don't get it because it's all, all indie, you know, sort of like a 
uh, um, indicated in a story, but mm -hmm. you know, again, you and I can read the same story and just sort of completely vibe it completely differently, yeah. right? So, yeah, the imagination's uh, now, mm -hmm. it's the, the, that one man's view, which is John's view now, you know, before you. And so, it's, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was nice to see the film finally finished. Yeah, how was it um, having John as a director? Uh, you know, a director who is also an actor himself, yeah. so can kind of bring, I'm sure, something uh, unique to the table. Yeah, I uh, obviously, given the fact that uh, uh, how successfully he directed the first one and how well it did, and um, so I kind of like felt like he, you know, had something. Mm -hmm. And uh, with the second one, uh, being directed by him and certainly the way he talks to actors is quite uh, with a lot of care and uh, so you can you, you there you see the actor mm -hmm. now you know giving notes and uh, it's quite pleasant yeah for you Millie how is it working with John now on two films and I'm sure you guys have built this trust um, and this energy between you on set Oh yeah, I felt like he is, um, I, he was different in part two, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we've sort of settled in, we know how to communicate with each other. I know what he expects from me, we know what to expect from each other, we know how to work together at, at this point. And he also brings in the actor perspective. He's not like a typical director, he doesn't just, you know, tell you what to do, he's not like a dictator, he's, mm -hmm. he's very open to mm -hmm. exploration, he, you know, solicits information, he solicits ideas, what do you think, what's your opinion, what's real for you, yes. and what's real for you and what's real for your character, and he helps you find all of that and bring it to the character yeah. you're portraying. And I'm sure that's really important for you to be able to bring, you know, your own experience to the character of Regan. Yes, it is. Because you yeah. know more about, you know, growing up deaf than John will ever know. Exactly. And it really helps, it really helped us in this film. Also, uh, you know, the use of voice. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, I could also bring my real experience of what I, what I do in daily life is use my voice sometimes. So I could bring that in for Regan. Mm -hmm. uh, I could give that to her character. And I thought that was important to bring in. Yeah. Uh, my last question would be, do you think there'll be a part three? Do you think there could be more? Uh, because I have to say the sequel is as incredible as the first one. <laughs> Right? <laughs> there you go. Yep. <laughs> it truly is the quiet place. Um, well, thank we you both know. so much. We don't know. Thank you both no, so much say, for being here. I Spanish. hope there's a part three. I could wish. Right? <laughs> Code language. Um, but a quiet place, part two, comes out March 20th and run to the theaters because it really is incredible, an incredible sequel. Thank you both for being here. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you.